Right, just going to do a little quick smudging here. I call in Michael, Gabriel, all beings of the highest good, Magdalene, Yahshua, all my guides to be in this room with me now as we continue to go through this material. Any nefarious beings that wish to derail this video, you have to leave. I do not consent to you being in my, in my home or in my equipment. Um, I revoke any permissions that you think you have to be here by using my wounds as an entry point. Uh, Michael, Gabriel, any of my guides, if there are any nefarious beings, human or otherwise, that wish to derail this recording, I ask that you escort them out at this moment. All right. All right, welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. We're picking up again with the Hathor material. I apologize that I did not have a video up last week. My ear got bad, and so unfortunately, due to um, editing and all that kind of stuff, I just did not get a chance to put this video up. But I'm very happy to be back this week. Of course, we're in the addendum section, which is like my favorite of the whole section. So we're going to be starting with Grounding to the Earth, which starts on page 206 of my book. Some individuals, in order to cope with brutality of this dimension, have access and identified with other realms of their consciousness, which are not related to the third dimension. For these people, the pranic tube that extends down through the core of their bodies and into the earth is literally retracted and pulled up so that they do not make contact with earth. In this way, they are energetically ungrounded. So they are able to float, as it were, and be in what seems like a safe zone for them. So the first thing that must happen energetically for individuals in this position who wish to ground themselves is to extend their pranic tube deep into the earth. This is really common. I know what they're talking about. Like, that's why we, I don't like even focusing on the upper chakras because so many people try to hang out in the upper chakras instead of going down into the lower chakras. And again, I'll say it again, you cannot ascend until you descend first. You need to ground yourself. You need to be very, very, very grounded. Some of the most spiritually ascended people I know are also some of the most grounded people I know. You've got to be here and to be present with your human experience, right? You didn't just come here to flip the timeline. That's one reason why you're here, but most of the, your, the, the main point of you being here is for you to refine your soul. For all of us, the main reason, the Mac Daddy reason why we're here is for our individual work. There's also a macro going on, but the micro is what's more important. And as you guys know, the macro cannot be fixed until the micro is fixed. So descend into that earth, descend down in. That's why exercise, physical exercise is so important. Nothing is going to pull you into your humanness than exercise. Incidentally, we have no judgment as to whether your consciousness is here or not here while you embody in flesh. Your consciousness Primary awareness can be somewhere else while you are living life or even in multiple places simultaneously. We are simply saying that if you wish to be here and to participate through your present embodiment in this passage or portal into the next dimension, you need to be grounded. So again, they're saying, you know, your life is is never ending. Your soul's never gonna die. So if you want to waste this life by hanging out in the spiritual realms and never coming down into your body, okay, but you're not going to ascend that way. Let me read that again. We are simply saying that if you wish to be here and participate through your present embodiment in this passage or portal into the next dimension, you need to be grounded. So that's the key, is to ground yourself into this experience. If that means you got to turn the YouTube off, if that means you got to put the tarot cards down for a while, so you get rid of the delusions, you know, imbalance of the sixth chakra is delusions spiritual delusions, 
get down into who you are. And, you know, I find like I've said this before, a lot of people that do this oftentimes will focus heavily on past lives. Like they're constantly focused on who they were in a past life. And that's great to understand that you've had existing lives before this, but you're not in those lives now. You're in this life now. So if you're someone that's so obsessed with past lives, what is it about this life that you're avoiding? Because even if your past lives you think were so great or you were this great person, guarantee you had struggles there too. In fact, I know that you had struggles there because if you didn't have struggles there, if you ascended, you wouldn't be back here now. And so don't fantasize about something that you can't put a finger on, making it safe, if that makes sense, making it a safe fantasy to avoid whatever it is you don't want to do in this life. Because that thing that you don't want to deal with in this life is just going to keep coming back, coming back, coming back until you actually deal with it. So very important. Very, very, very important. By being grounded, you can respond appropriately to situations in your life. While some persons may feel that safety seems to lie beyond or outside the act of grounding, nothing can be further from the truth. The second aspect of this has to do with the vibration of love and safety. Is it possible for you to withdraw and retract into an eternal state of awareness where love and safety are experienced, even if they are not experienced in outer reality? As a human, you have access to multidimensional aspects of your own consciousness. It is therefore possible to shift your awareness into an internal dimension of love and safety while being unconnected to the earth, ungrounded. That way you will float into your own bubble, to use a metaphor. We hope that more and more of you will choose to ground yourself rather than simply retracting into your in internal world. By grounding yourself and extending love outwards to others, you benefit everyone, including yourself. The ascent of Earth. Earth as a consciousness is going through her own elevation, her own ascension, if you will. And all organisms, not just humans, but plant and animal as well are being affected. We know this. We've talked plenty about the law of one. The law of one has said this as well. All of these beings and aspects of Earth's reality are going through their own individual process to align with Earth's shift into a higher vibratory field. The rest of the solar system is also going through a process of changing vibratory fields because your sh sun is shifting. However, Earth is going through a unique process that is not being experienced by other planets in your solar system at this time. Again, we've talked about this a lot. The Law of One also states this. That's why Earth is, is so on display right now. All these other humanoid beings are watching us because they've never seen this happen on a planet where a planet ascends with living beings on the planet. It's like a roller coaster ride that's never happened before. Usually, living beings have to get off the planet in order for the planet to ascend. So we're being watched on a very, on, on literally a world stage, but by world, I mean cause the cosmos, all right? However, Earth, so let's read that again. However, Earth is going through a unique process that is not being experienced by other planets in your solar system at this time. This is why there are beings from many dimensions of consciousness and other realms of existence who are stationed around Earth on planets, asteroids, and inter interdimensional space to observe what is happening. It is so unique. So, so many different people who are channeling these higher beings are getting the exact same thing. Ascension timing. We have observed that the phenomenon of ascension is perceived much like a marathon for some. And when they seem to believe that he or she who ascends first is the winner. This is not our view. And we want to be very clear in communicating this. Our belief is based on successful method that we have developed over the millennia, which affirms that the goal is not merely to ascend to another octave. The goal is to live our lives as fully and as richly as possible, constantly surrendering to the greater power of love and awareness. Yes. And that's something that I've noticed too, which is really kind of sad is everybody, well, not everybody, a lot of people in our community are like waiting to live when the flip happens. And if that's what you're doing, the flip's never going to happen. Can you find peace in your life at this moment with all the stresses around us in the middle of this war? Can you love your life? Can you find joy and beauty in it?
Can you be fully present today? Not thinking about the future, not fantasizing about the past, past lives, but be here now, in this moment now. Because there is beauty all around us. Even though the cabal is awful and we're in the middle of this war, there's still beauty around us. Our advice would not be to concern yourself with timetables and phenomenon. They will take care of themselves because they are such a cosmic proportion as to be immune to your thoughts and interventions. It would be far more beneficial to change those things you can. And what you can affect is the amount of love you bring to your world. Regarding love and duality, the highest state of consciousness through which you can assert, ascertain the truth of a situation is through the vibratory field that you call love. This is not indiscriminate love. It is not love without awareness of those things that are out of alignment. In fact, this love uses discrimination as an important part of awareness. From that vibratory place of love within yourself, can you perceive things more clearly in terms of their true nature as opposed to what your senses are telling you? That's the Yoga Chitavriti Narodaha, the end of the second pada in um, the Yoga Sutras. Patanjali talks about this, being able to control your senses, to perceive things as they are, not as you are. Because that is a truth, right? In truth, we always perceive things as we are, not as it actually is. So can you flip that? Can you understand and be the witness to your own senses so you can start to perceive things as they actually are? The physical senses are giving you one piece of information, but it's only a very small sliver of what is occurring. However, if you come from an attitude and a vibratory feeling sense of love, of interconnectedness, then you're more elevated into consciousness. From the elevated position, your intuition, your gnosis, and your understanding are much more immediate and clear. Thus, you can receive what is being offered with discernment, whether it is from us, other galactic civilizations, spiritual contacts, or from another human. Subtle bodies. Your ka is a complex field of energy. So once again, ka is like the Egyptian uh, word for energetic body. Its primary form is similar to that of the physical body, though slightly larger. This is why it is called the etheric double or spiritual twin in Egypt, e Egyptian alchemy. The early Egyptians understood its nature and relationship to the physical body. Indeed, the ka can move about and even bilocate in which a person can be, appear to be in two places at the same time. The ka is also an auric field of energy around it, which we call the pranic body. When we refer to the ka, we often mean both its primary form and its auric field. This field is egg-shaped, much like the other fields, and can get quite large as you move upward in consciousness. This auric field around your ka can ignite at certain moments in the upward movement of ascension and become a field of intense golden light. The ancient Egyptians referred to this as the Shahu, our glorious spiritual body. However, we are speaking here of, of very advanced energy states. All subtle bodies emit light and sound or vibration. These frequency are too high to be seen or heard physically, but they can be seen and heard psychically. We ascertain where people are in their evolution by the quality of light and quality of sound vibration generated from their field. When you hold a limiting emotional pattern or belief, the colors and sounds in your energy field become disharmonious. In severe cases of self-limitation, one or more of your bodies may actually alter their rotation, wobbling, locking, or freezing up, and in extreme cases, the subtle body can even fragment. A highly advanced being such an, as an avatar can have fields that extend for several miles, and in some cases, hundreds of miles. As we perceive humans, you appear to us as whirling, luminous, egg-shaped fields of light and sound or vibration. The physical body can be seen through these swirling field, fields of colored lights and appears to us as shimmery galaxy of stars. Each atom is like a miniature star emitting a bright light, and the organs of your body are like star clusters. When your body is viewed through the swirling fields that surround you, you are quite beautiful. You are faceted diamonds of light, precious, and most wondrous. And this is exactly what uh, Thoth said in the Emerald Tablets, that he sees this as light. And those that have more work to do, more, more shadow work to do, have a darker light or more, a dimmer light. And it's not that it's bad. It's just that's the bondage that can only be removed by that being itself. No one can remove it for you. You have to let it go and do the work. 
relationship of time and destiny. It may take a while to explain this, but we will try to be successful. It is related to language as odd as that seems. When you have an experience and you describe that experience through language, you are better able to grasp the experience, to hold it. The language facilitates the recognition of experience. You can certainly have an experience without language, but language allows your consciousness to mark an experience. For example, let's say that you put a book in a drawer, leave the house, and go somewhere across town. Then you realize that you need to recall something in that book, so you call home to your partner and tell him or her that you put the book in the second drawer and ask him or her to read you a particular page. Language has assisted you to communicate, so language allows the facilitation of experience until you become telepathic again. It would be very difficult at present to direct the person to a book if you did not have language. So language charts a pathway through the experience and its function of language to do so, but it is also its limitation, we might add. Time is a similar process. It is an actual flow, but it is much more complex in the linear way your society or your culture measures it. Because time is actually spiraling and nonlinear, it is multidimensional in nature. But as soon as you use linear measurement of time or any system of measurement, you have created an effect upon perception. Now there are three particular qualities or level of time that which we would like to speak. And the space time, time space stuff is really hard. I think for a lot of us to grasp, I've admitted that's been hard for, I get it on a very like abstract understanding of everything's happening at the same time. But in my humanness, that's hard to grasp. The first quality is biological time or organic time, which are the rhythms of your body, the rhythms of your breath, the rhythm of the pulse of your heart, and all the other complex rhythms of your biological reality. We also live according to me mechanistic time, clock time, which was invented to measure time sequentially in bits and pieces so that whole societies of humans live their lives according to a mechanism of measurement of time and not according to their biological wisdom. Boom. This is creating tremendous stress on individuals, which is not yet fully recognized. Living your life by the clock in order to fit into the convenience of society may serve you at one level, but at a biological level, it is very stressful because it disconnects you from your biological wisdom. Measuring out time biologically according to the rhythms of nature brings us to the second level of time, which is connected to the moon. The lunar sequence of time, the 13 full cycles of the moon that pass within roughly a year's times is more organic and a truer measure of time than the current, current Gregorian calendar used by many world societies, especially Western societies. The 12 month Gregorian calendar was created to disconnect people from the lunar organic sense of time. We've talked about this. The creators of the calendar were very precise in what they were doing. It was a ripoff, to use a street term, on your planet. It disconnects. It was a way to pull human consciousness out of the great mother awareness of Earth and connect to something that was abstract. When you measure time using the Gregorian calendar, you are literally out of synchronicity with the flow of time. It's an arbitrary measurement. It was pulled out of a hat, so to speak. It is not organic. And with that being said, like, how old are any of us really? Because we measure our birthdays by the Gregorian calendar. So am I really 40 years old? What is age? It is not organic. It does not reflect the rhythm of the body, nor does it re reflect the rhythms of the earth. So a truer sense of time would be to return to a lunar phase. And finally, the third sense of time is intergalactic, which is the result of the flow and relationship of galaxies to one another within reference to the central sun, as well as their relationship to your sun. This is another level of time about which you know very little. So there are three levels of true time, biological, lunar, and intergalactic. When you measure time mechanicalistically, you seemingly begin to have control over the earth because you can actually make things happen according to time. And this is true because you are creating another time stream through consciousness. But if you wish to come into an accurate description of life that aligns with the universe, then turn your attention away from the clock and the calendar as you use it and turn it towards your body, towards the moon, and cultivate a galactic awareness of time. The Mayan calendar is capable of tracking the lunar phase and the intergalactic phases, but it does not track body wisdom. 
Body wisdom is an organic biological measure of time that is held within the individual. But in regards to the lunar phases and intergalactic time, the Mayan calendar is the most accurate de deceptor that you have in your possession. And that's, you can see that with animals like dog smell time. Like my dog knows when it's dinner time and he can't read time. He knows when we're coming home. So we see the biological wisdom in animals that we also possess. <laughs> Unless you drop out, as it were, you will have to find balance. If you have to adjust to society, and most individuals do, then you may have to pay homage to the clock and be where you agree to be at a certain hour. And while you are following the clock, pay attention to your own body. Perhaps when everyone else is eating, may not be your time to eat. That's the dosha system. Maybe it's time to rest, to read, or to take a walk and then eat something later. The differences in rhythms of the individual are vast. vast. You must become sensitive to your own rhythms and take care of your own choices from your own body wisdom while also paying attention to the clock and the Gregorian calendar. We simply encourage you to also pay attention to the lunar phases and begin to sense the movement of time and from the new moon to the next moon. If you live in two worlds, you can be in a society noticing and tracking things according to that measurement and at the same time, be aware of and live your life with these deeper natural rhythms, which is something that we do a lot in yoga. And that's why if you're doing the shadow work channel, I'm having you focus so much on your subtle body. But before we go on to the next section, here is a message from one of our sponsors. Life force in the pyramid of balance. As you treasure your life force, it is natural to also value opportunities to relate with people, opportunities to do your life's work, and opportunities to become fully aware of the elements. This combination brings you up the spiral where you can achieve a new level of stability and balance. And once you have reached that new level, there's another level, new level, to master. In fact, there are never-ending choices regarding how masterful you can be we have learned that once you have attained a certain level of self-mastery, a new level opens and you can choose to move up the spiral to the next level if you wish, provided you elevate all four aspects of the pyramid of balance. The apex of the pyramid is always changing and moving. We are using the pyramid as a metaphor to describe something that is not tr truly this way. There's only a model to try to communicate something. And that is right. The law of one talks about that. That's why they call themselves the brothers and sisters of sorrow. They introduced the, the pyramid to humanity and they did it to try to explain to us what we really are, this epitome of energy coming up. But then the bad guys took a hold of it and, and inverted it, right? But the pyramid is ours. Again, the darkness cannot create anything. The darkness can't create anything. Stop giving the darkness so much credit. They're little thieves. They can't, they can't create anything. They can only take what was initially ours and invert it. So if we got rid of everything that the darkness had inverted, we would have nothing left. And why would we do that? It was ours to begin with. We're here to take it all back. Using this model, when you have reached the pinnacle of the pyramid, this would be a high point of consciousness where you are more aware than you were before aware of your life forces, your relationships, of how you are working and serving, and your relationships to the sacred elements. However, as you begin to move to that higher level, the pyramid gets larger and extends further upward so you may never reach the end. That's why we could be humble in serving you. We have learned that the spirit, the spirit is infinite and there are beings far more developed than we are. So it would be ludicrous for us to judge you. It would be an absurd waste of time and would bring us back down the spiral. We can observe your faults, but we don't judge them. It is the law of the pyramid that we do this for self-interest because you are our brothers and sisters. It is a loving self-interest. By serving you, we grow. The more awareness, masterfulness, compassion, and love we use to serve you, the higher up the spiral we go. And so we all move upward together. 
There are some people who slide back down, but that's fine because there is free will in this process. Eventually, when someone hits the bottom, that person will still go back up because there is no other ultimate direction. DNA. At this point in time, humans are using less than one third of their genetic information available to them. Of the available codons, which are actually units of molecular gates for memory at the genetic level, most humans are using less than one third. So there are two thirds of unused genetic potential available for use without adding other strands of DNA. Exactly. The 10 missing strands of DNA. That's the 10 missing tribes of Israel. It's in you, boo. They're not somewhere out there on the great globe, the great earth. They're in you. In other words, your present double spiral, the double helix that human possesses, is only one third activated. As you begin to move up into spiral spirals of ascension, a need for greater abilities and greater sensitivity, sensitivity develops. So when that need arises, your DNA will spontaneously open those codons in response to that need. Then you will find yourself activating more and more of your genetic potential. From our perspective, the first step before you even more into the other strands of DNA is to fully activate the two strands that you already have, because 10 plus 2 is 12. They're your 12 tribes of Israel. Anger about previous genetic tramplings by alien intelligence is wasted for several reasons. Anger is an incoherent emotion, and as long as your body holds incoherent emotion, it cannot resonate to the higher spirals of consciousness. That's why it's important to do things like kickboxing and exercise to transmute that energy. From another standpoint, it's wasted energy because all of consciousness flows in cycles, and you are coming out of a very dark cycle from which consciousness is waking up again. Consciousness sleeps in slumbers in different areas of the cosmos at different times. Sometimes consciousness moves in cycles of high flourishing, but in other times it enters cycles of pulling back into darkness during which potential is minimal. There are points where consciousness, for all intent and purposes, disappears into deep internal sleep. These cycles last eons and repeat themselves endlessly. It is a cycle of growth that humans cannot even comprehend because it is so vast. Life is simply the silic movement of consciousness, and you are a part of this consciousness that is moving now, awakening from its slumber. Our suggestion for those who feel angry about being ripped off as far as your DNA is concerned is quite simple. Forgive the past. Just let it go. Let the anger dissipate and deal with what is right here before you now. Anger will accomplish nothing other than stunning further growth. Embrace love, acceptance, and service will do more to heal the past and propel you forward than anything else you can do. Love heals all that it touches, and love opens the doors that have been closed. Genetic Mapping Physical genetics, as well as the emotional effects of family lineage, are all mutable. They can change. And the changing of these patterns comes through the interface between your ka, your emotional body, and your physical body. Without your cause, your life force, which expresses itself as a strength and a power that you can access. If the strength of that power is strong enough and your emotional body holds a particular resonance, a coherency of joy, unconditional acceptance, and love, then that resonance moves into your physical body, into your DNA patterning, and this can change genetics. Your science will see more of this occurring as more humans discover how to surrender to high states of joy, love, and acceptance. There will be some interesting things happening on the human genetic level over the next several decades. This will be intriguing to your scientist. It'll probably be intriguing to the good scientists, but the bad scientists are probably going to desperately be trying to hide what's happening. Genetic mapping is an external technology that allows the manipulation of genetic information, and it is neither good nor bad. It's simply a technology. If you wish to change your genetic structure out of a positive, life-affirming desire, then it can be a tool to reinforcing life. If it is used to suppress life, to contain life, to manipulate, or to adversely control others, then it is anti-life, and you will have a mess on your hands as a civilization. Given the wide dichotomy of human behavior, genetic mapping and manipulation are areas of concern for us. It is a spiritual materialism to believe that by splicing genes or ingesting a genetic chemical, you can pro progress without personal growth. Some of the ancient alchemists were involved in this, and some of them were deluded into believing that finding a magic potion would transform their consciousness, and that they would not have to deal with anything personal. Ah, uh, yes, the magic pill, the magic elixir, and now it's a magic of genetics. If you simply focus on your physical body as the sole transformer of your consciousness, you will be out of balance. If your relationships are not engaged, 
if your work and service are not engaged, and if an awareness of the four sacred elements is not engaged, you will continue to be out of balance, even if you possess the most advanced genetic technologies. So once again, the same lesson keeps being iterated. Work on yourself. That's all you can do is work on yourself and live your life. 